Welcome back. Let's get started on a great video. We're going to take a raise one step up here and we're going to learn how to make an array grow and shrink as you add and you remove items from the array. Now, what I have here is a little frame pre-built that you guys have seen a little bit before. Just let me walk you through what we're starting with. I've given this frame an array called capital A and it has eight slots. When this array is made, it basically looks something like this in memory. So when you use that new command to make the new array, it basically makes the array in memory. By default, all the values will be zero. Okay, not these numbers. And this variable A stores the memory address that points to that array. And that way, anytime you go A slot five, it goes A, go to that memory address here, Go to slot 5, slot 5, and grab the value out. Now what our task is going to be is we would like to add a number to the array. So instead of this array having 8 values in it, we're going to make it so the array now has 9 values in it. Now the funny thing is with arrays is you can't actually resize an array once an array is made in memory. So this array that was just made in memory the computer went and found a spot in memory that was capable of storing these eight numbers. Now if I say, hey, go make the array turn to nine large, or go make the length of the array a hundred, maybe that spot in memory doesn't have room for that, so they just make it not possible. What we have to do is a little trick. We actually have to make a new array. We have to copy all the data from this array into the new array, and then we can add whatever value, here I've just put 99 is going to be this value we add into the array, and we copy it in. So it looks something like this is our procedure. So you'll see here, I'm going to make an array called B. I'm not going to make it 8 long, I'm going to make it 9 long, because I need that extra slot. I'm going to copy the data over, so whatever's in this slot, we'll go over to here. Whatever's in this slot, we'll go over there etc etc there we go fast forward and then after I filled all my original data I can add my 99 or whatever value the user wants to add into that very last slot in my new array and then there'll be one more step and the one more step I'll have to do will say make a not point to this array in memory make it point to this array in memory so we haven't really made the original array larger. What we've done is made a whole new array that is larger, that has the same data and the extra value, and you make your variable point to that array. So the overall effect is you've made your array larger, but that's not actually what's happening uh, behind the scenes. So let's see this actually happening in action here in our program. So you'll see here I have my array that's created and I have a button called random fill. Now when I double click random fill, it's already been coded. Random fill just does what it says. It goes from zero to the length of the array and it randomly fills it with values from one to a hundred. I'm using this little method we wrote the other day, show list, so it shows in the list. If we actually give this a run here, you can see what it does and then we'll actually get to the code. So random fill, there's my list of eight numbers. Okay. So it's not actually like this here, where it's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I'm just doing random values. But you'll be able to see you know, our new value popping up at the bottom of the list, no problem. So let's actually see the code for this now, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go to Design View. And here's our little section we're going to be working with. Value to Add. I'm going to let the user type something in this box. This box is called Text Add and then they're going to press this button. So let's go for it. I'm going to press that button and I'm going to code that entire process we just described. So here we go. Text button add. So the first thing I had to do here was find out the number the user wants to add. This is just from the other lessons we've done before about grabbing a number out of a box. So I'm going to say something like integer num equals 
and I basically want to grab the value out of the box and convert it. So this is just our standard integer parse int. And what do I want to convert to an integer? Whatever was in that text box. So text add dot get text. Beautiful. Okay, so now I've got the number out of the box. What do I want to do next? Create an array that is one. Let's call it index position longer. So integer array. I'm going to call this one capital B is new integer array. Now I know my original array had a length of eight. I could type nine because obviously nine will be long enough. But what I'm going to do is leave this more general. I'm going to call it a dot length, which was eight plus one. Now this is better to do because this leaves your code much more general, right? This way it'll work with any length of a and the code will still run just fine. Now, next part, I have to do this copy part. So this is what I have to do. It's made this array and this array here has been all just empty. It's full of zeros by default. What I have to do is I have to copy the data over. I need to get all the original data into the exact same slot as it was before. So this little routine is perfect for a for loop. And all I want to do, oh, I seem to have wiped out my values there. All I want to do is go slot at a time with the for loop and copy that data over. I'm not even doing it right here in my video. So that's the process I want to get going. This is done nice and easily with the for loop. Copy the original data over. So here's my for loop. Start at zero. Go from K. Stop just short of A dot length. Go up by ones. I'm only in one line of code here. So I actually don't have to use the curly brace because it's only one line of code. And it's B slot K. Set yourself equal to A slot K. So this is a classic copy over data code. So you'll see here when K is zero, B of zero should set itself equal to whatever's in A zero. Okay, as this runs through all the slots, that is copied over. So even if that was a million index positions long, bam, it's those two lines of code, nice and easy. The next thing is I wanna add the extra number in to the last slot. So going back to our little diagram here, the user maybe has typed in 99, right? We've read it. All I want to do is put that number that they've typed in into the very last slot. Now, you know, the last slot here is index position eight. Um, we're going to refer to it a bit more clever. We're going to say, hey, B, change slot B dot length minus one to equal num. Now, if you think about this for a minute, b dot length is eight. Sorry, it's nine. And nine minus one is eight. That's the last slot in the array. Whenever you go b dot length minus one, that's always the last slot in array B. Okay, a dot length minus one, that's the last good index position in array A. So that's a nice one just to tuck in your memory, right? And we set it equal to num, all is good. Now where we're at is we're basically here. Our list is all set up, but we have one problem. We haven't added 99 to the variable A. Variable A is pointing in memory to this array. I need to do this final step. I need to say, you know what? My variable A, I no longer want you to point to this array. I would like variable A to point to the same spot in memory that B's pointing to. Now, this is going to be a bit of a simplified version, but let's say the memory address to B was 789. Okay, just some number, right? Spot memory. All I really want to do here is just make A also equal 789. That way, it will point to the same spot in memory. So what ends up happening here, it's actually easier code than I'm making it sound there, but we change the reference of variable a and you just do this 
hey, A, set your value equal to the value of B. Okay, it's important to remember here that A and B, they're variables that store a memory address to an array. So when you say A, set yourself equal to the same memory address being stored by B, you are getting this effect. A and B both point to the same memory address that keeps this array. Now some students think that's a weird idea. They ask, well, does that mean B and A both refer to the same array? And the answer is yes. If you say B slot 5, it's 50 right now. If I say A slot 5, it's 50. It's that same spot in memory. You can have as many variables as you want point to the same array in memory. Weird idea, right? But that's how it works. So when we see this in our code here, A now points to that new array. The old array that A used to point to, basically this one here, it's still sort of there in memory, but there's really no way to get to it. You have no variables that are pointing to it or keeping track of its memory address. And so really it's just garbage now. And it's basically what Java calls it. When the program ends, it'll clean up that garbage out of memory. And that memory is basically free to be used. Now, how do we actually see this in action? We have one last thing we do here. We say show list. Remember show list from other program will basically clear out the list, take array A, and re-put it inside that list box. So if this all works, I should be able to type numbers in and add them to the list. So that's the routine. That's a little bit of work, but not bad if you minus the gray stuff. It's only one, two, three, four, five. Really, it's only five lines long. So let's see this thing in action, because I know you're excited to see it probably fail, but it's not going to fail. It's going to be beautiful. I ran them, Phil. There's array A. I add a value, let's add one, two, three, four, and add to end, bam, we add it to the end. Let's add 99 to the end, add to end. Every time I do this, what's happening is it's actually grabbing the whole array, making a new array, copying the data over, adding the number to the last slot, and resetting the memory address of our variable A. Okay, and then the redraw. That's how you change the size of an array. Okay, so that's your little code. This is very popular code. It's sort of a standard that most students learn how to do in coding with arrays because sometimes you're not happy with the original length of the array and you need it to be a little bit bigger. In the next video, we're going to do a quick example of deleting a position in the array, which, as you can imagine, it's going to have similarities, but it'll... Uh, have one extra little step for you, right? So instead of five lines, it's going to end up being six, seven lines. We'll see you in that one.